In this video, I wanna go through like the 20% of CICD that I use 80% of the time. And my reason for doing that is I see a lot of people who try to learn something like CICD and they feel like they have to learn all of it before they can get started. And in a lot of these concepts and topics and skills that you use in DevOps, if you try to do that, you're gonna spend the next 30 years just learning about all the stuff that you didn't know and never actually doing anything. So let's do this video. And I think at the end, you'll have enough background knowledge to start building your own CICD pipelines, which will then reveal to you what you should be working on next to level up your skills. Hey, I'm Will from DevOps for Developers. And if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, thank you so much for doing that. But let's get right into the concepts here. So I think the most important thing to understand about CI CD is that you're automating a workflow that's done by people. So in order to automate that, you've got to understand what the people are doing manually. And at the same time, I should stop kicking the shit out of my camera stand. <laughs> um, so let's talk about that. So the CI CD workflow mimics how your code gets from your developer's workstation or your workstation out into production. So that code's gonna live in a repo somewhere. So a common scenario might be that you check out that repository and then you create a new branch, you do your work, you push that branch up to your repository, open a pull request, and then that gets merged into the main branch and then the main branch is now ready to be deployed out to production. But along the way, there's certain things where we want to stop and just say, whoa, hold up now. Let's take a little look here. And that's what your CI CD system has to mimic. For example, uh, you may have a, a policy set up that no one can push directly to the main branch, which is a great policy to have. So the first thing you're going to want to do is disable the ability for anyone to push to the main branch. And the only way you can get your code added to the main branch is through a pull request. And then you want someone else to review that pull request. So if I write the code and I open the pull request, I'm not the one who merges it in. Someone else from the team is going to review that code, make sure it looks okay to them. And then if they agree with how I've, how I've solved that problem, then they will merge that in. Um, before you even open the pull request, you may have a policy that says all the tests have to pass. And so you can build that into your CI CD pipeline. Whenever a pull request is open, the test suite runs automatically so that the pull request reviewer sees right there in the pull request that all the tests are passing and they don't have to, you know, check out that pull request or check out that branch and run the tests manually themselves. We'll let the CI CD servers do that for us. Whenever that code or that pull request gets merged into main, we may have some different actions that we want to take there, such as building a Docker image or compiling our code if it's a compiled language or transpiling it if it's something like TypeScript going to JavaScript. Either way, there's some type of action that may need to take place before that code's ready to be deployed. So we're gonna build that into our CI CD pipeline as well. A couple of the other things that are worth noting here is knowing what shouldn't be in the repo. So for example, if you're working with a Node.js application, you pull in dependencies through your package.json file. And when you install those dependencies, they all get installed into a folder for your project called node underscore modules. The thing to know about that is you don't wanna commit node modules to your repository for a couple of reasons. One, it gets huge. Um, so then you've got all of this code in your repository, which may seem like a good idea, but it's actually not because in your package.json file or your package lock.json file, you've already specified what the dependencies are, including the exact version number that you're using. So anyone can recreate that node modules folder at any point. So there's no point and storing it in our repo, it just makes the process of checking out code and checking in code a lot more cumbersome than it needs to be. Something else that goes in Git ignore, actually I don't think I brought up Git ignore, 
There's a file called .gitignore you can add to your repository, and you can list the things that should not be committed back to the repo, like your node modules folder. Other things are like configuration files that are specific to your dev environment. So if you have like a dev database server, you could have your username and password for the developers in that config file, but you don't want passwords going up into your repository. So you would add that to .gitignore. There's another one called .dockerignore. I think it's .dockerignore, which applies to building Docker images too. So whenever you build your Docker file, it will ignore anything that's in that .dockerignore file. Along our workflow, you're probably gonna wanna do some security and dependency scans as well. And you need to talk with your development team and understand when the right time to do that is. So you may be doing dependency scans like checking for out-of-date packages or packages that have known security vulnerabilities that need to be updated or security scans if you're building Docker images or web applications. You may want to run a security scan to make sure that this pull request or this code change isn't introducing new security vulnerabilities into your application. So that was kind of a lot to take in and I think the best way to wrap this video up is for me to walk you through an actual CI CD pipeline and that might help solidify this in your head. So let's do that. The first thing you'll notice about this, um, actually I guess I should tell you what this is. This is a pipeline file for GitLab and regardless of which CI CD tool or server you're using, I think they all, I think it's a pretty safe statement to say that they all support configuration of the pipeline as YAML files. And so that's where I was going with this is the first thing you'll notice is that this is a YAML file. And if you're not familiar with YAML files, I've got a video that I will link here and in the description below that shows you how YAML files work. Um, but let's jump into this. We've got an image tag here, which is specific to GitLab just basically says, hey, when you run this, I want you to run this on this Docker image and it runs inside of the Docker image. And then we've defined these stages, which kind of mimic the workflow process I was talking about in the Git workflow section of this video. So we're gonna build our code, then test our code, package it and release it. And so if we look through here, there's a couple of different sections. This particular repo actually has two different uh, applications that it's building in the same repo. There's a client and an API, but we can look at this and kind of get an idea of what's going on here. So whenever the CI CD pipeline runs the build stage, it looks for the build tag and then executes anything that starts with that tag. And it's going to use an image called node LTS stretch, which is um, a Docker image from Node.js, and then we've got a before script and a stage here, and actually, I misspoke there. This stage key right here is what ties it into our stages array up above. And then the script is the actual thing you want it to do. So during our build stage, we want this to run npm install, which again highlights why we don't need to push our Node modules folder up to the repository because our CI CD server is gonna grab those dependencies on its own. Once we're done with the build, we would go to the test. So let's go down here to the test API. And then the main thing that stands out here is the script section. It's gonna run the NPM test command to make sure that all of our tests are covered or are passing. And then one thing that's kind of worth noting here is how you can get different things to happen at different times. For example, we only want to package our API application whenever we've merged a pull request into our main branch or our master branch. And we can do that using the only tag here. And then it's going to say only what? Well, only if the Git branch is named master. And then our script here just does a Docker login, Docker build. It tags it. Uh, but one of the things that's worth noting here is we're using these environment variables to log into our Docker registry and even get the name of our Docker registry. So you can have different registries for different stages of your application if that's something that's helpful to you. But the key point here is that we can trigger this to behave this way only on certain branches. 
and then have it execute different commands. One of the other things here is we're using um, environment variable tags to tag our Docker image, which is another conversation you're going to want to have with your development team and your operations team so that everyone knows how to find the right Docker images out on your um, out in your Docker registry so that whenever you're trying to deploy, troubleshoot, or roll back, you know what the tagging strategy is and no one's trying to guess what Docker image they should be working with. Now, obviously there is a lot more to CI CD than what I've just shown you here in 10 or 12 minutes or so. But the point, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video that I wanted to make here is that you don't have to learn all of that to get started. You can just start with this pattern go build this stuff, and then as you encounter more problems, then that's a signal to you, oh, hey, here's something new, I need to go learn. And it gets you into that mode of doing things, which gives you successes and accomplishments and builds motivation and keeps you incentivized to keep learning and keep doing more. If you enjoyed this video, you might like some of the other 2080 videos I've done where I've top tackled other topics using the same approach. Um, like Docker and Linux and networking. And I will put links to those up here. I'll put them in the description down below as well. And I will see you over in one of those videos.